Welcome back, everyone. I'm Marvin Jackson here on Metro Scene, and I am joined by Shalom Omomo Asagi. And uh, welcome to the show. Hi, Marvin. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Shalom is uh, up and coming and already a star as a filmmaker and actress. She makes me nervous. Every time I see his smile, it makes me think of father before we saw him last. Then I think of mother and how in all her predictions, she never mentioned her leaving us. First, let's talk about this award you got. Our film that we just uh, released back in um, the summertime of 2021, Tale of Tarot, uh, it won Best Director and then Best um, Actress for the Miami Indie Film Awards. And that was amazing um, to get two you know, awards at the same time. It was, it was great. Let's talk a little bit about um, before those awards and where you're from and uh, you're a Bowie State alum and uh, you also play volleyball there. So talk a little bit about your background and so people will know where you're from and who you are. Yes, of course. So I am originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, that is my city, that is my home. I claim that forever. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so I was born in Baltimore um, and I actually went to a school called uh, Patapsco Center for the Arts. Um, and it was a high school that also had like, you know, arts disciplines. So I was able to kind of hone my craft mostly there from ninth grade until, you know, 12th grade when I was a senior and I graduated. Um, I actually went to Goucher College first um, for my first, you know, uh, two semesters of college. And then I winded up transferring um, to get that HBCU experience. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I went to Bowie State and um, really enjoyed my time there. I actually winded up walking on to the volleyball team um, and then getting a scholarship to that same year. Uh, and then played volleyball while juggling, you know, doing theater and kind of just like being able to have the best of both worlds. But I was really glad to have made that transfer because I winded up getting a lot of great experiences, great memories, but also great things to like take me into my future career from, you know, the theater department there and got my degree in 2020 in the height of the pandemic. So that was interesting too, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's kind of a little bit of background of me and like, you know, how I got to here. <laughs> so you got a little bit of that HBCU experience before the pandemic, but, uh, but it was a little tough, I'm sure that at the end, uh, but you, you came out of it very well. Thank you. You know, talk about that volleyball experience and what that does for you as far as helping you um, and the rest of, you know, your career and that kind of thing. Absolutely. So I feel like ever since I was in, you know, in high school um, and even like, you know, going into uh, college, sports always really helped um, like hone in my leadership skills, um, my competitiveness um, and kind of just channel those things into ways of implementing them into my career. So as far as filmmaking goes, um, you know, being able to communicate well on the court, you know, also helped with being able to communicate with people when you're on set and understanding that, you know, like it takes a team to, you know, create that sort of uh, project or whatever the outcome is that you want for what you're working on. It takes, you know, a group of people and not just one person. Um, but then also, you know, I was very passionate about sports. So, you know, it just translated into, you know, giving 110% you know, in my career, just like I gave 110% when I would play and when I was on the court. That's a great answer. Thank you. <laughs> I can identify with that myself, being a college athlete myself at one time. Let's talk about uh, your theater experience at Bowie State. You did a lot, right, on campus uh, be before you became uh, a filmmaker. Yes, absolutely. I had some amazing professors, um, Professor Bartlett, shout out to you, and Professor Velasco, Professor um, Kay, like all of them, um, Dr. Mefford, when I was first there, uh, all of them really helped me like be able to use Bowie State as a platform 
for all of the, you know, it, it, whether it was a wacky idea I had that I wanted to try, um, whether it was, you know, just a performance that needed to be done. I kind of assumed like that position very quickly uh, with them, like as a faculty when I first came in um, and I kind of got thrown into a production and asked to like coordinate it and, you know, be the stage manager for it and the producer for it. And it was my first year being there. So that kind of just told you like how the rest of my college career went. It kind of went like that. Um, I was very heavily involved in the, you know, productions as far as um, stage managing or as far as producing or directing. But then I had my moments where, you know, I was able to shine and be on stage. I would probably say my favorite production that we've done was Godspell. That was actually my first production there that I got to perform in. And it was just a blast. I got to shine. I ended up um, winning an Irene Ryan Award um, and going to the Kennedy Center uh, to, you know, compete for it um, and like, you know, further uh, competitions. But yeah, I was able to kind of really hone in all of my skills as far as writing, directing and acting for, through the, you know, the Bowie State Theater Department. Kudos to that theater department at Bowie State. And, uh, you know, you're still pretty young and you're getting awards already and doing all kind of things. Talk about, uh, you know, what it takes to be a good actor or filmmaker. What do you think are the keys to that? Mm. When I hear this question, I'm like, oh, what is <laughs> what is the, the best way, you know, to be? And I feel like, honestly, when it comes to filmmaking specifically, I'd say the, the way to be the best filmmaker is to just use your resources, use what's around you. A lot of times people are looking for, you know, they're looking up for their opportunities or they're trying to like reach up to grab things. And it's kind of like, no, look at what's beside you. Issa Rae said it best. And um, I really resonate with her as a filmmaker because you never know who the person sitting next to you could be in the next five years or the next you know, six years from now. So it's better to look at your community and look at who's around you and kind of build with those people. And then like on the acting side, I would say, you know, are you training? Are you auditioning? Are you putting yourself out there? Are you networking? Um, are you practicing? Because a lot of times people think, oh, you know, like I can just do things here and there and I'd be okay. But acting a lot of times people don't see the behind the scenes part. They see the glitz and glamour, but it's a long time of like, you know, preparation, sometimes a lot of waiting <laughs> and a lot of no's, but you have to be okay with who you are as a person first and foremost, but then like you have to rely on your talent and believe in yourself, I would say. Yeah. Let's talk about the films that you, you've been working on. The one that you got the awards that was pretty awesome. It is a period piece. I looked yeah. at it. It was just great to watch. I love period pieces. So thank you. I Me thought too. that was pretty excellent. But why a period piece? And talk about that film. Absolutely. Um, so I also really love period pieces. Um, it is one of the genres I feel that you don't see Black people as often. And if you do see them, they're, you know, projected in the, you know, we're slaves, basically. And I have always wondered, like, why has no one made, you know, a Bridgerton for us? No, why has no one made like a Pride and Prejudice for us? We like period pieces. We like fantasy. So I at first was going to say, OK, well, maybe that's a passion project I can work on for the next few years. But then I said, no, I have a production company. Let me do it now. And that's kind of how it came about. But it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun trying to, you know, get the costumes, the location. Like, it was a lot. <laughs> but it was very <laughs> fun in the process. It must be tough, actually, uh, producing, directing, and acting at the same time. How tough is that? It's tough, but it's not It's not too, too tough. Like for Dante's Inferno, the newest film that we have coming out, um, that is the one where I did all three. And it was interesting because I had to kind of take my mind out of the thought that like, oh, if I'm acting on camera right now, what do I look like? I had to stop thinking about that, you know? 
um, when I was directing, I'm not thinking about, you know, how I did in the other scene when I was acting. And then when I was producing, I, you know, kind of took that hat off before we started production. But, you know, I just try to like pace myself as much as possible because I am my own worst critic sometimes. So I just try to give myself a little grace. <laughs> All right. And, and talk about, uh, you know, the difference between those two films, because I don't believe Dante's Inferno is a period piece, right? It is not. Um, <laughs> it is actually another, I guess, genre that I can say that I really, really enjoy. And that's the, you know, thriller, psycho thriller kind of, you know, genre. Um, and the fact that it was set in an HBCU, I am a product of an HBCU. So I would like to see a lot more, you know, HBCU projects out there um, that replicate, you know, the actual HBCU experience written by people that either went to HBCUs or written by people that, you know, um, just have that experience and able are able to talk about, you know, what it actually feels like to be on an HBCU campus. But, you know, sprinkling a little bit of like, thriller and suspense in there was a lot more fun than just, yeah. <laughs> Talk about those two awards again. What were those awards and what were they for? Yes, yeah, so the first award that we got was for Best Director. And of course, these are for um, Taylor Taro. And um, that was the Best Director Award was given to um, our director for Taylor Taro. Um, his name's Alexander Hammett. And then our assistant director, Angel Taylor Carr. They are also my associate producers and they're awesome. And I was really glad to see them get that award because they deserved it. And then um, I actually received um, the best actress award for my role as Isla. And count towards our dance together. You're so demanding, Miss Diesel. I suppose it's my demeanor when I find it appropriate. And you played it very well. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and so, you know, congrats on all of that. You know, keep doing more. Because I'd just like to just say, you're joining a long line of, of Bowie State entertainers and actors and, and uh, filmmakers like Amy Keyes started it out back around the end of the 70s. And then you had Tony Braxton, you got Tico Wells, who uh, was a great actor from Bowie State, Wale, a great <laughs> entertainer. <laughs> and then you got... <laughs> Jovan Adepo, he has been in Fences with Denzel Washington. Miles Frost is up on Broadway now, about to play MJ. So uh, you joined that long list and uh, just like to say congrats to you and keep doing great things. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Metro Scene. We'd like to thank Roz White for joining us earlier. She's from Seven Guitars, which will be playing at Arena Stage through December. And also let's thank Jalom Omo Asagi. She's already won awards as an actress and uh, she's a graduate of Bowie State University. So for Metro Scene, I'm Marvin Jackson. We'll see you next time, everybody. <laughs>